Hey, I'll also I'll ask you about the BBC. We've got a caller on, on the BBC and the licence fee. Um, yesterday we had the annual report. We've also got to be talking in the next half hour about the uh, annual report from the, on the royal finances, which is always fascinating. Mm. £45 million pound pay rise for King Charles, but there were some pretty big uh, pay rises for some of the BBC's top stars. Gary Lineker hasn't had a pay rise for three years. He's only how he gets by on £1.35 million, no one will know. Little, get little, my little violin out for him. Um, but I mean, some of these people, some are big stars, some mm. of the biggest stars, the Michael McIntyre, the Graham Norton's, we actually don't know what they're paid. It's either paid through a production yeah. company or through the commercial arm. We're not allowed to know that. So it's a bit of a skewed thing. Some of them are news mm. presenters. Some of these people, I think, are highly talented, brilliant people who would probably be hired elsewhere. Some of them, you just sort of go, how are you on that money? Who's who's offering you a job elsewhere that would mean you would have to come on those sort of salaries? Yeah. What do you think they're about? But, 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 so many people saying, well, I'm not paying the licence fee well, This is the thing, though, isn't it? When we're talking about somebody else will pay them more money, who? The BBC is the market leader. By law, it is the market leader, because you have to pay it before you can watch almost anything else. Yeah. So this nonsense, but it's a bit like, you know, a footballer goes to Real Madrid and then demands more money. Real Madrid turn around and go, well, who else are you going to play for? Some, somebody better but than I us? But wouldn't ITV like or Sky Sports want to uh, want to have Gary Lineker? Yeah. And we're told in a recent report that, you know, that they wouldn't, that ITV said, we don't want him, we can't afford yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. I think that there's that sense of actually a person becomes too big. You have to understand that there is a limit to how much you can demand before your platform itself packs up and but goes, we can find is, somebody for a lot less money. Is there a difference, though, between the big stars? And there yeah. are stars, there are big names. You've got, like, an ITV, you've got, like, the Anson Dex, you got Michael yeah. McIntyre is a big star. There are, there are some stars, and Graham Norton as well. It's like, if Graham, Norton, sure. if Graham Norton is interviewing three celebs I've never heard of, it's still going to be a good show good. because it's yeah. Graham Norton. Exactly. He's funny, you know, and exactly. Michael McIntyre is funny. Michael McIntyre walks on stage, to me, he's funny. Okay? Whereas Gary Lineker is presenting France versus Germany, it's still France versus Germany. Nobody's going to tune out. I do think that his coverage, I love, look, I I love the talk sport coverage, but I'm watching the telly. I, I, I think Gary, I don't want to know his views on mm. any political issue. I think he's an idiot on this stuff. I happen to think, I mean, I don't care what crisps he likes. I, but I do <laughs> think he's very, very, very good at presenting footballing programmes. It's a, it's very comfortable to watch. But this is my thing. There aren't mm. that many big stars on that list. There are a lot of people who think, are you that big a star? Are you somebody who, if you weren't working for the BBC, mm. the BBC would hemorrhage millions of viewers? No, no is the answer. And that tends to be with the political coverage and things like that. And I think you've seen this with some people who have gone on and left the BBC to start podcasts. They get a good audience, but actually, is the BBC losing figures because those people have left? No, I not mean, actually. I mean, I think we're all crying every day that Emily Maitlis isn't on news tonight. Yeah, we're we? all desperately sad. I don't know how that. we cope. Um, <laughs> let's go to a call. Actually, David's on the line. He's in Manchester. A good um, afternoon to you, David. Oh, hi there. Hello. I'm ever uh, sorry. I kept you waiting a bit too long. We were yapping. You know what we're like. No, no, um, no. It, it's fine. I know you wanted to talk yeah. about the licence fee. I mean, first of all, how do you feel about all these big stars having pay rises? Well, they don't deserve it, for one. Two, I've paid my licence fee. I'm, I'm over 70 now. I've paid my licence fee for years. And then we pay for all them BBC programmes. Yeah. And then suddenly all the good ones, like Pools and Horses, etc being put on rip box yeah. and now we've got to pay for it again so yeah. what why why should i pay twice i've already i've already paid for it to be made i'm a, I'm a shareholder yeah. i mean and so do you do you still pay for your license fee no i've stopped you stopped i've stopped do you watch live television of any sort because you could be well, you're, no, you are breaking the law if you do a streaming service i i, I can get three different streaming services for half the price of what yep. I'm paying for the BBC license. But we're constantly Netflix, told it's Netflix. such good value. It's such good. We're told all the time it's such good value for the BBC. It's a world service, but you can get the world service on all the international stations. Yeah, for nothing. And they're yeah, and people living it, listening to it abroad, they're they're not having to pay for it, are they?